Hello there. I recently unlocked all of the stuff that matters in the new premium warbond, Cutting Edge. Now the warbond itself costs a thousand super creds, which you can get in game. It's usually hidden behind a vault. And I don't know if it's because I'm in difficulty 5, but this time I only got 10 super creds, which is not a lot. Or you can spend $10 to get a thousand money, super money, creds money. and use it to buy the premium warbond. So is the premium warbond worth it? The answer to that question is a big maybe. And let me tell you why. Let's start with the weapons. The premium war bond comes with four weapons, three primary and one secondary. And if you're interested in buying the premium war bond, expecting some sort of OP weapons, then let me tell you right now, some of them are ass. Take the Punisher Plasma, for example. The description reads, a modified Punisher shotgun firing exploding plasma rounds. Fire carefully exploding plasma cannons your squad mates. Now at first I thought this was total ass because I was expecting some sort of plasma grenade launcher, but I find it kind of hard to accidentally injure my teammates because I can barely injure the bugs. It's really hard to aim because it has a weird firing trajectory, even the grenade launcher shoots straighter than this. And once you manage to get the hang of it and land your shot, it's not all that great either. I tested its power against the spore spewer to see how many shots it takes to blow it up. It wasn't really easy to aim from afar, but it takes quite a lot of shots. So I was wondering if it actually has its uses, so I brought it with me on an extermination mission. And as it turns out, it's very good against enemies that are bunched up together the way they are when they just got out of the breach. So if you have this weapon equipped and there's a breach, it's good to come to them and then blow them up as they're crawling out. But you gotta be careful because the warnings were true. You could potentially injure your teammate, especially if it's a direct hit. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And surprisingly, I managed to kill a Titan after one hit with the orbital railgun and a couple of shots with the plasma shotgun. Though to be completely honest, I didn't know if the Titan was hit before. Against the green spewers, it takes around a whole mag, I guess about seven to eight shots to actually kill it. And that's just randomly aiming, not necessarily targeting its weak spot. So I guess it's not total ass against bugs, but it is against bots. Now I tried using the plasma shotgun and shot it at those chainsaw guys, the berserkers. But since most bots have specific weak spots, shooting them with this only staggers them a bit, making them look like drunk lumberjacks. Shooting them a couple of times more didn't do the trick either. The plasma explosion only put them off balance for like a second, but they kept pushing. So eventually I feared for my life and switched to my auto pistol. I tried it on a Hulk to see if I can hit it on the face and do some damage, but it just stood there as if it's saying, You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Next up, we have the ARC-12 Blitzer. Description says it blasts a wide burst of high voltage electricity that arcs between all units. Now this description makes me imagine that it's similar to the almighty and all overpowered ARC thrower, only with shorter range. Unfortunately, it's not. The blitzer does arc, but the arc itself is a bit random. Sometimes it spreads to the other bugs, sometimes it just focuses on one. It has unlimited ammo, but the trade-off is you can only fire once every, like, two seconds. I thought at least the spread of the arc can save me for when the group of hunters start to violate me, but because the arc is so random, that's not the case. And the charge time in between shots means I better run away. Despite the range, the time it takes for you to actually shoot, and also the randomness of the arc, it's actually not too bad against bugs. With the warrior bugs, it takes one shot to blow their heads off, and with the brute commander, two shots. Not to mention, every time you shoot, it gets pretty flashy, so equip this if you want to channel your inner Palpatine. Now, how does it perform against bots? I don't know, you tell me. I didn't try it against bots because even I'm not that much of a masochist. Especially since the blister doesn't behave the same way an arc thrower does, which goes through armor. This one doesn't. Bruh. Next up, we have the LAS-7 dagger. Now, if you're aware of the sight, the laser primary that takes forever to actually kill one hunter, 
Well, this is its smaller cousin, which equally takes as long to kill a single hunter. Since it's a type of energy weapon that builds up heat over time, theoretically you never have to reload. But in reality, you use up almost all of your heat allowance just to kill one medium sized bug. To be fair, the cooldown is kinda quick, but there's a whole lot of other better sidearms out there. And then we have the G23 stun grenade. When I saw this, I thought, why should I throw a grenade that stuns and not kills? This is definitely ass. And I was so wrong. I mean, it does zero damage and it does seem useless in theory, but in practice, you lob one of these at a charger charging you, and it's like you're saying, <laughs> and it magically stops moving. <laughs> Which means you're free to do whatever you want with it. But the magic doesn't stop there. See, if you're tired of being chased around by a titan all over the map, just throw one of these bad boys. They'll immediately forget what they were doing. It's like this grenade doesn't only stun them, but kind of wipes their short-term memory. Hey, what happened? Throw one when the bile titan is about to throw up on you, and congratulations, you just cured its nausea. Thank you. If you want a clear nest, you can also throw it inside a bug's nest. Even though it's not gonna explode because it does no damage. So use something else. No, but seriously, you throw one of these stun grenades. The Bile Titan doesn't move while it's just sitting there. Drop a 500 kg and you won't miss. Next up, we have the LAS-16 Sickle. I love this gun. Now, the description says it fires in short bursts. Personally, I fire it full auto all the time. This gun feels like it's either a stalwart or an MG, but it's a laser. Now, it's true, it does have the overheating system as well, so technically you can have unlimited ammo if you, you know, not fire full auto all the time, but that's not fun. Not to mention, you get an allowance of six spare mags, so that's enough. Keep your finger on the trigger button, always. Now, recently, I'm feeling that the hunters are being more rabid, and the reason why I love this gun so much is it's so fun killing the hunters with it. It takes some time to take out some of the armored bugs, like the Brood Commander, but it's so accurate and the recoil is almost non-existent you can practically just hip fire it and hit all your shots and the fun doesn't stop there because like most weapons in helldivers this weapon also has a different firing mode except for this weapon you get different zoom for your optic this is 25 meters the normal range and if you switch it up to 50 meters the target gets magnified and if you turn it up a notch to 100 meters it gets even bigger now because it almost has no recoil you can basically use this gun as a fully automatic sniper just position yourself on some high ground and start mowing down hordes of bugs coming at you now this feature is probably what makes this weapon the only one that is very good against the bots. Super accurate. You simply need to aim, shoot, and they won't know what hit them. Hello? You can even quickly take out a group of bots from afar without them knowing you're there. Taking them out quick enough they don't even have time to flare. The recoil is so good you can even take out bots from afar while moving accurately. Chainsaw boys coming at you, just point at their face and keep on shooting. Rocket devastators harassing you, take out their rockets, then spray their sockets. Wow! This weapon alone makes me feel that it's totally worth a thousand credits spent on the premium war bond. And it's not because it's like it's super OP or anything. I don't want to use the word OP because I don't want the devs to hear this and nerf it, but it's because it's truly, actually, honestly, very fun to use. <sighs> it's beautiful. Anyway, another notable thing that you get from the Ward Bond is this booster called Localization Confusion. As the name suggests, it's confusing. The description reads, increase the time between enemy encounters. Now based on my understanding, encounters here does not mean the amount of enemy patrols you find in game. 
Instead, it has something to do with the frequency of bot drops if you're fighting automatons, or bug breeds if you're fighting bugs. Now, these drops and breaches, they have a cooldown timer between one breach to another. Now, this booster supposedly increases that cooldown timer, so you won't have to face breaches back to back. Now, the question is, does it actually work? I have no idea, but I equip it anyway and I treat it like a good luck charm. Last but not least, let's talk about the armor. In the Cutting Edge Warbond, we get three sets of armor, including the armor itself, a helmet, a cape, and also some banners, and well, there's this victory pose, but I don't really want to talk about that. In total, you get two medium armors and one light armor. Now, each armor have the same type of armor passive, provides 95% resistance to arc damage. So to test this, I decided to ask Random to shock me. Poison? Could you shock me, please? Again. Yeah. Again. Again. Alright, thanks. So, the guy probably thought I'm some sort of kinky weirdo, but as you can see, my viewers, the armor does minimize arc damage to the user. It's still pretty resistant against the Tesla Tower, even though it still hurts. Now this armor passive can come in handy because there are more and more people using the arc thrower because it's, uh, what's the word? Fun and uh, totally not OP. And based on my personal experience, accidents do happen. So maybe with this armor, you can die less to friendly fire, or should I say, friendly shocker. Now I can't really talk much about the design because it all boils down to preference, but my favorite set is Prototype 16. It kind of reminds me of the Hunter Killer 47 droid from Star Wars, except with the samurai helmet. This is hands down the best looking design for armor in this game for me. Alright guys, that's all from me for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like it, please leave a like and subscribe. And also, I would like to know what you like about the new Warbond. Please leave a comment in the comment section. That's all from me. See you next time.